Hey, it's Andrew Graham here from Offshore Audio, bringing you tips, tools, and workflows for being a better live sound engineer. And I thought today I was going to talk to you about block diagrams. So recently I wrote an article about block diagrams, just explaining what they are and how you can use them. And so primarily they're used to map out signal flow and connections, but they're also a great way to plan out how to cable stuff up if you've got a gig coming up. And they're also great for educating you, whether that's about systems that you're already using or a venue that you're planning on working in the future. They're really good for getting your thoughts down on paper and understanding how everything is connected up. So what I'm gonna do is I thought we could work through a block diagram together and I'll show you how I might use one just to get my head around signal flow in a venue. And hopefully you guys can learn something from this process and so you'll get some value out of it. So let's crack on. First of all, I'm gonna dictate which way up it is, okay? So I'm gonna mark my stage up here and I'm gonna mark my mix position down here, okay? And I'll begin with identifying the elements that are going to be on the stage and how I want to connect them up. So let's say that we're mixing a small jazz band. So we're going to have a small drum kit. We're going to have a bass. And we're also going to have a guitars and vocals. So now we know what these are. We need to know how we're going to connect them up. So let's think first of all of how we get the signals from the stage to the mixer. Okay, so here's our mixer down here. Great. And we're going to use a stage box to transport this over. We're going to use a digital stage box. So I'll just mark this over here. I have a habit of drawing these too small, so you might see me struggling to fit everything in. I'm just going to write SB here for stage box. And it's connected to my mixer using a CAT6 cable. It could be on some sort of standard, you might want to mark that here. You know, it could be AES50, Dante, MADI on other stuff as well. But what's important is we know that it's connected using that CAT6 cable. So I'll just write cat six here and that it flows both ways. So it's going to and from the mixer and the stage box, it's a two way street. So let's hook up my drum kit. Let's say I need four microphones for my drum kit. I'm just gonna draw four lines here for my four microphones and I might use a snake or I might just group all the channels together. But what I'll do is I'll link them all up with a line and then I'll draw that line into my stage box. I'll mark the flow of the signal, the direction the signal is going in, and I'll also write this an XLR cable because I know these are microphones for this drum kit. Let's move on to the bass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a DI box and take the jack from the bass guitar straight in to the stage box and then the mixer. So I need to mark out a DI here. So we'll just do a little box, a DI, and we know that from the base to the DI box, we need a jack cable. So I'll just scribble that here. And again, I'll mark it. That's the direction of the signal flow. It's also a good idea to maybe mark beside the DI box that it requires 48 volt phantom power. Because otherwise my active DI box won't transmit the signal. And from there, I know that my XLR is going to come into the stage box. It's worth noting as well, when I do the drums, usually I'll, again, I'll show the breakout at the stage box. So that can be one, two, three, four, and then five is my DI box here. Just straight up microphone on the guitar amplifier and on the vocal. So again, we'll draw here and here into the stage box. We'll mark these as XLR and I'll draw the signal flow again. So now we have everything connected up, but our artists need to hear something, right? So we're going to connect up some stage wedges, some monitors. 
So I'll just draw a little triangle there for a monitor. Let's say we're just gonna have two. You know, it could be three, four, five. You could position them where you want. And these are going to be active stage monitors, okay? And if you need to know more about active speakers, I've got a video, I'll link to that down below the video here. I've also got a video on digital stage boxes. I'll link to that too. So what we'll do is we'll take our signal, our mixes, our monitor mixes straight out of our stage box. You can do this from a different side, you know, if you want, maybe it's clear to do that. So we'll come out the bottom to these going in here. I don't tend to discriminate too much on the sides that it comes out of, whether it's an inner and out, I like to use these arrows. You can do whatever one makes you comfortable and which one you find easiest. Because really, this is just really scrappy. It's me using a stage diagram, a block diagram to get my head around how I'm gonna hook stuff up. You know, where, where I can find problems and where I need cables and what types. So back to the stage monitors. Powered stage monitors, they just require an XLR cable from the output of the mixer, designated by these arrows, into our wedges and the amplifiers inside the wedge. So then that's our wedges set up. Now, what about our mix going to the front of house? So let's draw in our front of house. Let's say we've got two tops and one sub. Okay, I'll just do a T for these and an S for the sub. So we need to split the signal, right? We're gonna go into a crossover. CR for my crossover. And what happens after the crossover? We need to amplify each one of these. So let's say we have a stereo amplifier for our tops and a single amplifier for our subs. We're coming out of our stage box again and this is our stereo mix from the mixer, our front of house. It's coming back down this CAT6 cable into our stage box and coming out on XLRs. Two XLRs are coming in to our crossover now. I'm gonna mark the direction on these again and mark that they are XLR cables. Into our crossover, they get split, okay? So our left and right signal here is split in our crossover into the frequency range for the tops and the frequency range for the subs. And so those frequency ranges need to be amplified. So this is our two channel amp. I'm writing 2C amp here because it's got two channels. We're gonna use that for left and right. So left and right here are going into our two channel amp. I'll mark that signal flow. And that's gonna happen probably on XLR again. It could be jacks whatever the interface on the crossover is. And once they're in this amplifier, they're gonna come out on speak on cables. The amplified speaker signal is gonna come out. One will go there and the other will go into this other one. So we know it's going in this direction, marking the signal flow, and we know it's a speak on cable on both of them. What about the sub? So the bass frequencies will be sent out of this crossover into a separate amplifier. Again, most likely on an XLR cable. And when they come in here, this one channel amp, one C amp I'm just writing, they are amplified and then they come out and we're sending them down to just to the sub. And that's really my basic signal diagram for this small jazz band in this small venue that I have just created out of my head. This is just for me, this is my planning technique to know that I've got all the bases covered. I can use this to know that I have enough XLR cables and enough microphones to mic up the band and that I know all the connections that I need to have. You can use this to teach yourself how venues are connected up. So why don't you task yourself with creating a block diagram for a venue that you work in, or you have worked in, or you'd like to work in, or you've just been in. Create a block diagram for a venue and connect everything up like this. And then why not share it with other people you know, post it on forums, or you can send it to me and let's have a discussion about how that was as a learning process. And maybe if there are any areas that could be improved, we can talk about that. 
But this is great for your own planning and learning, but you wouldn't want to give this to another engineer or a team of engineers because like I said, it's scrappy. This is my thinking process, okay? So why don't we have a look at using software to create more legible block diagrams that we can pass on to others and use to communicate our needs. Let's look at that. I tend to use Whimsical, which is this website here. It's um, whimsical.com and you just select the flow charts that they make and they're really great for setting shapes down and planning out your stage. So if we look at a similar model to the last stage, you know, we can, we can fire a mixer down here and just type it in, you know, uh, we can fire a stage box up here. We can just write SB again for stage box. We just grab like a circle or something to represent our microphones, you know, and you can make that a little smaller and you can, you know, hold out, drag it over and you end up with uh, copying them over, you know, you can add text here if that's your bass, right? This is your drums, right? And these could represent microphones or it could just represent, you know, positions where you know you've got to bring microphones in. And you could take your connector and just drag it into your stage box, you know? So I just wanted to show you that. And you can color change all of these things as well. You can change the color of the blocks, you know, you can change the color of the cables. So you can do a lot. You could use a key to show that maybe red is an XLR and gray is a, you know, jack cable and so on and so forth. But you want to use some kind of software like this anyway. If you want to know more about all the connections and the equipment and the signals on a live stage, then I have a present for you. I'm giving away the first module of my workshop, Unlock Live Sound, totally free. And I'm going to link to that right under the video as well. So if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, just go down there, get a hold of the workshop, check out the first module, see if it's something interesting to you and let me know if it's very helpful or if there's anything else you'd like to know.